Hi, this is Rachel McElroy. Hi, this is Griffin McElroy. And this is wonderful. Why do I sound like this? Hold on, let me th- touch some of the knobs on the microphone. Got to tweak it. Because obviously the pitch setting has been turned down quite a bit. Let me see. Let me turn it up to the so Everybody too knows high. you're sick, Griffin. Okay, well, maybe not. Maybe this is the only podcast they listen I to. I can't believe that's true. It's got to be Once tr- you get a taste of Griffin McElroy's. Once you taste of the McElroy juice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. McElroy. I started that and it's my fault. Is McElroy juice what you get when you sort of grind one of us down in like a mortar and pestle? Like a big giant? Like a big evil giant? I anyway. I was thinking more like secretions, but that's worse. Yuck. I don't know which one's worse, actually. So, uh, yeah, listen. We are very sorry that we did not put out an episode last week. Uh, and to be frank, this episode is probably going to be a little bit short and a little bit strange. Uh, here's, here's the situation for a little while now, uh, Henry has, uh, been sick and he's getting better. He has, uh, bronchiolitis, which but before that, but before that I was also sick. And before that I was also sick. Well, no, I mean, he had a stomach bug. He had a stomach bug. Him and I have just sort of been, it's like we're playing like a Pokemon trading card game and it's like, I've got stomach flu. Oh yeah. Well, I'll see that. And I'll raise you the sinus and. It's bad. By the way, don't Google bronchiolitis. That's what our doctor told us to do. It can apparently get pretty bad. Uh, but he's on the upswing. I'm very slowly on the upswing. Uh, but it's been it's been like a while like this. And this is a podcast all about like positivity and talking about things that we are like enthusiastic about and things that make us happy. And to get like pretty real for a bit, like it's kind of hard to do this show compared to. Uh, our other podcasts when you're feeling down. Yeah, no, there is a lot about being uh, sick that shifts your focus to just surviving. Well, um, and, and having a sick baby yeah, is, and, and, is the worst fucking thing in the world. And what I'll say is that um, this show is kind of the approach that we're able to take on this show is, is one that we are very fortunate uh, to be able to do, you know, we can, we can identify things in our life that make us really, really happy. But when you're going through something difficult, that is challenging. Yeah. And and that's always something that we strive for. And I think it's something that humans strive for is just like, look, look on the bright side. Um, but last week, I don't know, we probably could have found time to re- also, he is not sleeping and we record this most of the time while we're in the room right next to his nursery. And I'll be damned if we're going to, you know, break one of his precious, precious few sleep cycles uh, for any reason. But we're doing this today, and we thought with this episode, um, I, I we had this idea to just sort of talk about things that make us happy literally right now. Um, things that maybe wouldn't take up like the normal amount of time that a, a segment might take up on this show, things that maybe don't justify a full like 15-minute deep dive. Um, but also we just kind of wanted to talk about stuff that we're, uh, that we appreciate right now in an effort to kind of like, I don't know, boost our own spirits in a way. Um, so yeah, we're going to just sort of rapid fire through some, some real good stuff. It's not going to be our usual airtight format that we usually have. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I'm excited to be recording uh, wonderful again, despite that I may not be able to, create the sound of excitement with my voice right now um but here we are do you want to start us off uh yeah sure i can do that this is just off the dome people i'm gonna unbutton a button because i'm this shirt is too hot for what we're doing (laughs) can you hear that can you hear the sound of griffin's chest hair coming out of his shirt (laughs) that's all the hair (laughs) um I mean, I guess my first thing, all the chest hair I've gotten lately, uh, in the last like three months or so, I've really been blossoming. And it's such a special and important time in my life. Oh, Griffin, that was going to be my favorite thing. Well, you can do it too. What do you love about my thick, bushy <laughs> crop of chested Ooh, hair? Yeah. What, 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 what's your favorite thing about it? The feeling of it against your face every morning? Every morning I rub my chest and torso uh, across Rachel's face. And it's That's like, how he wakes me up. And I don't want to do it, but she said that it's like an, an angel's kiss uh, every morning and that she <laughs> loves it and needs it. So that's the first thing. What's the second thing? Um, you know what? I'm just going to put this out there. Hit me. Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. 
yeah, like you, you've been into this lately? Is it making you feel good right now, Wheel of Fortune? Or just the idea of the Wheel of Fortune? <laughs> I you? watched it the other day while you were cooking dinner and thought about how comforting it is to me. It is comforting. It's probably my favorite game show to play along with because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm pretty good at it. Uh, a buddy of mine that I went to church with had a, the Wheel of Fortune game on his computer. And I remember being really good. There was one day we were over there eating McRibs. <laughs> Holy shit. What a what a <laughs> visceral memory this is. We were eating McRibs and playing this game. And the thing popped up. And I guessed it before any letters had been added wow, to the thing. Griffin. And I felt incredible. It never yeah. happened again. I love Wheel of Fortune, though. Yeah, no, it's fun to play along with. Um, and I love I love a good word game. Yeah. And um, it has been the exact same show for decades. They really haven't tweaked it very much. Yeah. They added the million dollar prize, which I saw somebody win once. I saw, some, you know, how they, <laughs> they add like the million dollar thing uh-huh. onto the wheel and then you collect it and then it'll show up in one of the prize envelopes in the end. So it's like a very small chance that you'll get the prize envelope and then a very, very, very small chance that it'll be the envelope that you pick at the end. Yeah. I saw it. And then I went to get a haircut. And while I was at the haircut, I was like, the craziest shit just happened. I just saw somebody win a Millie on on the wheel. And the woman who cuts my hair was like, holy shit, I saw that too. And we celebrated. I you celebrate. Have very specific memories around Wheel of Fortune. I do. It apparently <laughs> occupies a very important space in my life. That was a good one. Um, I want to talk about one that I apparently have done before. I talked to Rachel about it. Um, but this last week I consumed countless, countless hours of it and will continue to. And that's Games Done Quick. Uh, it's a, the speed running charity event that they do twice a year. And by they, I mean, uh, this, this organization that puts on these events where a bunch of speed runners come and play video games as quickly as they possibly can and raise a bunch of money for different charities, usually the Doctors Without Borders organization, or this year it was the Pre- Prevent Cancer Foundation. They raised $2.2 million. It's like a huge, cool thing. How does it raise money? Uh, they just get donations from from viewers, and they're really oh, okay. smart about it. There's like donation incentives where like you can you know pick a character's name in a video game or something like that. There's a lot of stuff like that where they 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 sort of boost donations. But yeah, man, I just love video game speed runs. I think it's a really really fascinating practice and a, a an interesting community. And there's so much like technical stuff that goes into it that I kind of love watching. Um, so this happened all last week. I probably would have done this last week if we had an episode, uh, because they do it in January and then I think they do it again in July for summer games done quick. Um, but I think it's just the best stuff and I love watching all these old games, but like seeing them in new ways, uh, seeing, seeing things that are wrong with them that can be exploited that I never even knew about and watching these games that I like bashed my head against as a kid get completely obliterated. Uh, it's, it's just, it's really, really interesting. Is there a way to figure out what game they're going to do when? Yeah, they have a whole schedule, uh, that, that is up on their website. Uh, I think they did, uh, I can't like a couple hundred runs. I feel like like this this. would only work for me if I were familiar with the games, which is, yeah, if they do a, if they do a cool spot run, uh, Rachel, (laughs) they've probably done cool spot. Would it make you happy if I learned how to speed run cool spot? Cause I can guarantee you that that branded video game was, is not, does not have the tightest (laughs) code. I bet you there's some, there's some shit you can get up to. Our listeners at home don't know that I love cool spot, love cool spot. I, that was one of those games that I never owned that I used to rent from Blockbuster repeatedly. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, there, there were a bunch of great runs this year. They're all uh, on demand on the Games Done Quick YouTube channel. The Resident Evil 7 run, that's a game that came out last year. They've already like figured out ways to like screw with it, and I loved that game, and the run was really cool. They did one run of, and, and this is probably my biggest recommendation, of uh, Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, which was the Super Nintendo Zelda game, which is like one of the best games, one of my favorite games ever. And there's a category of running that game where they randomize where everything is. They like get into the code of the game, and then like oh, you know where to find the bow in Zelda, only in this random version, it's going to end up where it's not supposed to be. So you're, you're playing through the game in like a weird order. Um, and they actually did that as a race. So they had two players who started playing the game, trying to find where out where everything was, playing this game that is, again, like a classic that I know backwards and forwards, but presented in this really new way. Uh, it was really interesting and cool. So I love I love speed runs. Speed runs and this was a this was a really cool event. What else you got? Uh, so another thing is, um, this is kind of hard to phrase. I feel like the things that have brought me pleasure this week or this past week have been kind of abstract. Okay. Um, so 
doing the right thing, I guess. Okay. The, <laughs> that's It's actually called do the right thing. Do the right thing. Is the name of the... I, yeah. Um, so this is embarrassing, but um, when I was parking the other day, I hit somebody's car with my car. That is true. And I left a note. So uh, wait, hold on. <laughs> you, hold on. No, hold on. Of course, like you left a note. Are you saying that like, are you just trying to like brag right now that you... Well, so you had a bumpy, an auto bumpy, and yeah, you, so embarrassing. I got a bigger car a few months ago, and I don't know how to maneuver it yet. And so I'm like constantly over the line in parking spaces and all this stuff. So, yes, of course I left a note. But what I'm saying is that in that situation, I had one decision to make, and I made it. Yeah, I it ain't it a was hard the right decision, decision though. No, well, for hear me a, out. okay, for a good person, I guess it's not a hard decision. And you're hear a good me person. Out. <laughs> hear me out. Um, I feel like when you're typically in a difficult situation, there are usually like a hundred things to do, like knowing that there is something that has happened and now I have endless options in front of me, terrible. And usually it ruins my day. But in this case, I did something. I knew exactly what I was supposed to do. And when it was done, I like totally forgave myself and moved on. I think it helped that the person whose car you hit was apparently no, a true. real yeah, champ. Yeah, they were very, very nice, which was, I appreciate I heard Rachel on the phone with them, like laughing, like she was talking <laughs> to an old friend whose car she had just maligned. I was really embarrassed and they approached it with a lot of understanding, which was very nice. I'm sure they appreciated it too, because I have definitely been in a situation. Uh, I had my uh, window, my side window in my car, like, fucked up because somebody hit it in a parking garage yeah. uh, and didn't leave a note or didn't do anything. That was just yeah. up to me to solve the mystery, <laughs> follow the clues. You could have saved your window, but um, yeah, I, w- I guess I was, did just, I say window? I meant side view mirror. Okay. Anyway, I was just surprised. I think, you know, after I probably was the week I had had where it was just kind of like, well, <laughs> this Makes is another sense. thing. Um, but I was surprised at how kind of, easy it was to not beat myself up over it yeah because it happened it was an accident and i was able to do something that i was supposed to do about it and then it was over and it was just i think that comes with age i feel like yeah when i was younger i've never actually been in an accident i I hadn't either um you hadn't either you got an accident on our way to the by this house oh yeah that's right (laughs) (laughs) Um, I have a thing. It's not exactly this week, but I can't stop thinking about it. Um, it's Lady Bird, the movie. Yeah, I um, almost, I almost mentioned that. I we we went to see, so Rachel and I like don't really have opportunities to go see movies. Really, our only chance to do it is if Rachel is off work and I'm uh, off work and Henry's in daycare, which is a day like today is the only real time that that's true where we can sneak out and see a movie. We've seen make. I I went and saw Star Wars without you, but other than that, I think we've only seen like three movies in the last year. Um, And one of those movies was Get Out, which was my favorite movie of 2017, hands down. But I think Lady Bird clocks in just behind it because it's such a it's such a good movie, man. Like it's the praise that it has been heaped upon it and the, the praise that I can heap upon it sounds so simple. But it really stands out when you see a movie and believe every single word that every single character says, and it connects with you as as feeling real. Um, and it, and I also think it's kind of profound that this the the, the character Lady Bird, her experience in this movie, uh, does not mirror my own experience. Like coming up, like I had a very good non confrontational relationship with my parents and. Um, you know, other, other differences, but I found it so relatable. Like it, it, it taps into something that I think a lot of coming of age movies and stories, uh, don't really tap into. There's, there's something so universal about it that I found so incredible. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a really honest movie. Like it feels like not dramatized particularly. It just feels like. This is this is the experience that a lot of people have, um, and and there's so many relatable characters because everybody is is being played in this very believable way. I don't know. It's hard. You're right. It's hard to kind I, I, of. I've seen it described as like it. a small story told really well, but I actually think like it actually does quite a bit. Like it, it, it tells a lot of different sort of facets that you would see in you know maybe a few coming of age stories. Um, I, I love that she has like relationships with people who like 
occupy these kinds of archetypes that were absolutely relatable to me growing up. Like, oh, yeah, I also, you know, dated a person like that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it's such a really such a really great movie. And I'm so glad that we went to that we went to see it. Yeah, it's I, well, and, and maybe it's, it's because the, the character Lady Bird herself is is so um able to be interpreted like you don't get any kind of inner monologue you're not like reading her diary over her shoulder but you feel like you understand how she feels in every situation yeah it's so you're because, like you're like really with her the whole time yeah it's it's because she's a very it, it's interesting how it tells this very it, it tells a story about like kind of a vulnerable character as she kind of finds her way through the world right like you cannot have a coming of age story without that but at the same time she's also really confident and really like well spoken and uh like very like charming the scene where she's flirting with the guy uh who she just met in the uh in the uh grocery store like shows you like this is a, a character who like knows what she wants and is not like afraid to pursue that while at the same time also being kind of like unsure of every single thing that she's doing. I don't know. I, I think it's a, I think it's such a great movie. Um, yeah. You got anything else? Okay. This didn't happen to me this week because I have actually been healthy. Uh, um, but I thought I, you were going to say I hit two more cars <laughs> just while we've been recording. Yeah. Um, RC cars. <laughs> Uh, it's that moment when you have decided that you're better enough to clear off all of your sick person's things. Yeah. Um, so when I am sick, um, there is a bag of used Kleenex that follows me around the house. Yeah. Uh, it's usually like a, like a grocery bag that I use to put my, um, my used Kleenex in. I don't know why I really have to go into that much detail. <laughs> yeah, geez. Getting anatomical on it. Uh, but yeah, so there's that. There's cough drops. There's medicine. There's. It's just the number of things that kind of follow you around when you're sick and when you realize that you're better enough to not need these accessories in your life every minute. Uh, God, that's a wonderful uh, feeling. Yeah, I feel like you're really taunting me right now. <laughs> I, I feel like this is timely because I just cleaned up my office before we recorded in here because it was a fucking din of plague. Um, but yeah, I, I get that. I you also know, you fold up the little blanket you've been using on the couch and you say, now, now this you're making is a done. decision. Is it, is it the cleanness of the zone after that that you like? Or is it the like importance of the decision of just like, I don't need these things anymore? <laughs> I mean, it's both. It's both, but it's definitely. Um, it's that moment where you're just like, I've, I've beaten this and now I don't need all of you weapons. Yeah. On that same note, that first shower you take after you're finally like feeling better. I feel like that first shower, I mean, you take showers when you're sick probably, or if you don't, that's fine. I don't know what you've got going on, but that first one where you're starting to feel healthy and you take the shower, a shower is so revitalizing anyway, that when you like finally are over the hump, it's like, you feel like you could go and fight Superman or something. Um, I have one and it's a little bit esoteric, but I've spent a lot of time this past week playing around with a, a piece of software called Game Maker Studio 2, which is the sequel to Game Maker Studio. And it's a, like game development tools, which I know, I don't know anything about anything really. Um, I, I've messed around with stuff like this kind of in the past, but I, I started to look into this um because uh, a, a couple of games that i really like like undertale and uh, hyper light drift were made with it and um i heard that it has a, a sort of cool way to do programming which again i don't know I, I took some code academy classes but i don't know like basically anything and without going into too much detail it's just a really accessible like cool way to make games if you don't know anything about like programming where all the coding is done i, th I really think it should be taught as like stem uh, classes for kids and stuff like that. Cause all the programming is just done through like drag and drop where you just drag little chunks of code into these sequences and then drop them. And then it's so like parsable, um, which I love that word because it means something, but it also sounds like you're saying the word possible in like the weirdest way <laughs> imaginable. Although on that note, it is very parsable. <laughs> <laughs> to make a game with it because like i've made like two little rough prototypes for games that i think are really neat in the last week that i've been messing around with it and like i don't know i 
I, the way that my brain works, like I love a good like puzzle and I love trying to figure out like, okay, I want it so that when you press this button, the look of the button changes and it opens up this menu that has all your stuff in it. And then figuring out like, okay, well, I need to figure out how to make this look different when you press it. I need to figure out how to make it send a message to this other thing that opens up the menu. And then I have to figure out how to populate that menu with all the different items or whatever inside of it. And then I need to figure out a way to, you know, set quantities for those things. Like each sort of decision you have to make opens up this tree of, of like branching decisions where you have to figure out the best way to like achieve what you want to do. And in a lot of like places that's just like coding, you do all that through, you know, scripting and writing scripts and have it like having to know like uh, the ins and outs of a language or something like that. And that's like way above my pay grade, but this is so like approachable and parsable. And I think it's really neat. It does it work if you don't have a very specific idea of what you want to make? Um, I mean, there are tutorials that it comes with that are actually really helpful. There's one in particular that like walks you through like, okay, we're going to make a shooting game. So first off, it's great. It actually shows you a little YouTube video in the corner of the software that like literally you could just follow step by step and then you make a game. And if you're at all interested, uh, the trial version is free. And that tutorial is free, so you can just hop in and make that thing. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I imagine a lot of people are kind of interested in game design, but don't have a very specific idea of what they want to make. I mean, I've always been. like, like, Video games are the art form media type that I have consumed by like a huge margin the most of in my life, but making them has always been inaccessible because it requires you to be proficient in all these different doctrines. You have to like know how to... Uh, operate a game development software like Game Maker or Unity or Unreal or whatever. You have to know how to program. You have to know the scripting language. You have to know how to make art. Um, and I, I think what's really cool about this is that you don't really need most of that stuff. So like when I started, I did that tutorial and I made this very basic sort of like twin stick shooter game where you're a little UFO flying around shooting things. And I finished that tutorial and had like enough of an understanding of the tools that I was like, okay, I want to add lives to the game. How do I do that? And then I tried to figure out how to add lives to the game. And then I did. And I was like, okay, I want to add like power ups. How do I, how do I make a power up? And then I had to think it through and then I figured out how to add power ups to it. And in, in doing that, uh, like taught me how everything works. Uh, and then I had this super complicated, virtually unplayable game, but I don't, I don't know. I, I love learning new stuff and I love creating, like, this is why I like uh, GarageBand and Logic Pro X where yeah. it's like, now I know how to make music and I didn't know how to make it before. I feel very similarly about this. It's just like, I did not know how games were. And even if I never make anything, which I probably won't ever make like a full game, like it's really interesting to know how games work or at least appreciate that every single facet of every single game has, uh, you know, a hundred decisions and a hundred different like solutions for problems that went into it. Um, I, I would definitely recommend checking it out if you're yeah, at all interested. Cool. It's free. Um, you know, it's not free though. Advertisements on our show. Can I, can I see you? Wait. A bonk, 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 bonk. Bonk, bonk. <laughs> Did you? Bonk? Now, I'm imagining, like, you just pointed to a musician in the corner who was playing, I don't know what that sound was supposed to be, like a thumb piano or something like that. And they were trying to read the sheet music, but it's pretty dark in here. So they're like, bonk, <laughs> bonk. Is that an E flat? I guess so. Bonk. <laughs> Um, we have a lot of sponsors this week and we are going to try to move through them very quickly. We're kind of playing catch up because we missed out last week. So we will try to get through them real fast for you, but we want to take some time to appreciate first off me undies because you may be thinking about that old Jimber, Jimbership, which is how I truncate Ooh, gym I membership like for the new year. But why don't you commit to comfort and sign up for a me undies membership? They're made from a sustainably sourced, naturally soft fabric that's three times softer than cotton foot cotton uh and with the subscription plan new undies or socks are delivered to your door every day and it's easy to switch memberships cancel or skip a month at a time we uh we actually just got some in like literally 15 minutes before we started recording they're matching how romantic yeah cannot wait it was very exciting i think the we got a pair with donuts on it I love donuts and good underwear. Right now, MeUndies has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Until January 20th, you can get 20% off your membership and free shipping. That's 20% off an already discounted membership. And MeUndies is so sure you're going to love their underwear. They will offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, you get a 100% refund. So become a member today and start enjoying all the perks of having a MeUndies membership and start wearing great underwear. Go to MeUndies.com slash wonderful. That's MeUndies.com slash wonderful. 
Also, I want to tell you about Daily Harvest. Wouldn't it be great if you could have nutritious meals every day without having to hit the farmer's market or chop up a million fruits and veggies? That's not an exaggeration, by the way. If you make like a like a frittata, you're going to have to crack like a billion eggs and you're going to have to chop up like a million peppers. A million peppers. Who got the time? Now you can get superfoods delivered right to your door with Daily Harvest. You can prepare smoothies or activated breakfast bowls in under 30 seconds. Each cup comes ready to blend or heat. You just add water, and their produce produce is organic and unrefined, and it looks as amazing as it tastes. We've had some of these. We have. Yeah, they're really good. Uh, You can go to daily-harvest.com and enter promo code WONDERFUL to get three items free in your first box. That's promo code WONDERFUL for the first three Daily Harvest cups at uh, daily-harvest.com, daily-harvest.com. All right. Our next sponsor is Blue Apron. Blue Apron. Welcome back. Uh, Blue Apron, as you know, delivers fresh, non-GMO ingredients and step-by-step recipes right to your door that can be cooked in under 45 minutes. There are 12 new recipes each week based on what's in season and is designed by Blue Apron's in-house culinary team. For eight weeks, ending on February 26, Blue Apron is teaming with Whole30 to bring you delicious recipes. Have you heard about Whole30? Yeah, I have. Yeah, me too. Uh, Our menu will feature two Whole30 approved recipes each week, like chicken lettuce cups with avocado and kale and sweet potato salad. Kickstart your new year with Blue Apron and Whole30. Blue Apron is treating wonderful listeners to their first three meals, a $30 value with your first order if you visit blueapron.com slash rose. So check out this week's menu and get your $30 off with free shipping at blueapron.com slash rose. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Uh, Griffin, do you want me to do this next one? Yeah, why? Because it's about bras. Oh, dunk! (laughs) You could do it if you want. Do you want to do it? No, you got it. Okay. Uh, Did you know that most old school bra brands only carry 15 sizes? No, obviously not. (laughs) Well, Third Love offers 60 sizes in cups AA through G, including half cup sizes. All right. Yeah. Uh, They're they're great. They're great bras. Um, A lot of times if you're a lady, let's say you're at Target because you're buying, you know, cleaning fluid and bananas. And Target's and... whole thing is just cleaning fluid. <laughs> Get your bananas sparkling clean here at Target. And then you also buy a bra and you think this isn't a very good bra, but I need a bra right now. So I guess I'll get this one. Yeah. Do you know you say bra a little bit? Like really? You, yeah, a little bit. Oh, now I have Vera's. No, it's amazing. <laughs> you sound like um, you sound like Phil Keegan, the host of Amazing Race, <laughs> when he says spa. That's a, that's another wonderful thing is every time Phil Keegan says on the Amazing Race, he says the word spa, which he says a lot because they hand out a lot of spa packages as uh, rewards for coming in first. He says spa, <laughs> spa. It's great. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> tell me about these great bras. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to say anything. No, please. <laughs> Third Love is dedicated to creating bras that fit better and feel great by using thousands of real women's measurements and super smoothing memory foam. Just answer a few simple questions from Third Love's Fit Finder quiz. It takes 60 seconds and you can do it all from the comfort of your home. Go to thirdlove.com slash wonderful now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash wonderful. Uh, the website again, thirdlove.com slash wonderful. All right, we got a few Jumbotrons here. Stick with us. We got one for Blaine, and it's from Nora, who says, Blurn. That's clearly not how his name is spelled or pronounced. Nice try, Nora. You're the greatest friend a person could ask for, and I'm so lucky to have you in my life. Sorkin quote. I guess they want me to add an Aaron Sorkin quote in there, but I will... Not. Uh, I miss you all the time, but I know we will see each other soon. Taz reference. (laughs) (laughs) I love this. You're wonderful. Get it? I said the thing on the thing. A huge nerd, and you bring joy to all who have the pleasure of knowing you. Love, Nora, and the McElroy. It might have gotten cut off, but technically it is true. One of the McElroys did say that. Uh, I have another Jumbotron for Megan, and it's from Lindsay, who says, Griffin, read, please. Okay. Sorry I couldn't take you to Hamilton with me. Is this me saying this? Anyway, but please accept this birthday message from Sweet Baby Brother 30 Under 30 Media Luminary. They can't take it away. Griffin McElroy. It says that. I've moved on. (laughs) Um, You are a good, good sister, and I will always associate with you as long as we live. (laughs) But remember, you snooze, you lose, mumbly. Happy Sweet 16, Meg. Oh, that's a nice one. Uh, Our next Jumbotron is for Graceless.com. 
Graceless is the world's first anti-aspirational brand for women hell-bent on changing how we're talked to and about. It's content and connections for those tired of the supposed to and should have and ready to just be. Media targeted to women aims for perfection regardless of its focus. Graceless throws out the measuring stick saying you don't have to aspire to be anything but yourself, which is already wonderful. Join us at graceless.com. Fuck yeah. I'm going to edit some like uh like DJ horns all over that message cuz it was dope as fuck. Boop 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 boop. Yeah, those. Like those. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just cut and paste <laughs> that over it. <laughs> Uh, this message is 4D. It is from You Know Who This Is and I Love You. Ah, But I don't know. What a mystery. Ooh. I bet it's uh, Paul Abdul. Hey there, exclamation point. And that's just in parentheses. I don't know if they wanted me to say that, but it's in parentheses. So I thought maybe they did. Hey there. Your brain's been all fuzzy lately, and everyone's been asking you to say a few good words to yourself, and they love you. So let's take a baby step and ask someone else to say something you wrote. You're a champ. You're a teacher changing lives, a kick-ass web developer, and you're basically the best at Animal Crossing. You're okay. Now, you're great, but you better watch that Animal Crossing throng. Yeah, Griffin Griffin could challenge you on that i'm just saying what you selling those turnips for that's all i'm saying is what's your max turnip gains if your turnip gains are any less than a mil you need to go ahead and back off that a little bit don't get me wrong you've got it going on but the turnips just keep it in mind podcast podcast (laughs) podcast they're audio programs that tell smart stories in innovative ways using editing techniques like like this this. like this like this this. but let's face it all that smart stuff can be exhausting that's where stop podcasting yourself comes in it's so stupid it's just two stupid dinguses being dumb idiot jerks for 90 minutes Stop podcasting yourself. The stupid show that smart people love. Find it on iTunes. Or MaximumFun.org. Do you have another thing for me? I do, yeah. Uh, And this is actually inspired by watching the show The Good Place. (gasps) The Good Place was literally my next thing. But I'm not going to talk about The Good Place. Well, beans. So you can if you want still. All right. Although I kind of spoil it. Uh, It made me think of replacement swears. Okay, these are fun. Uh, so the one of the big things you learn early on in The Good Place is that people are not allowed to swear. Uh, and when they try to, uh, replacement swears come out of their mouth. Yeah, so fork and shirt. And yeah. I can't remember the other ones, but there's a lot. Uh, but I've always really liked these just in general. Did you like Frack on uh, Battlestar Galactica? That's like the big one for uh, yeah, me. Yeah, kind of. What, what are the ones you're thinking of? Um, I mean, I like... I actually do say like darn and gosh a little bit. Are, are those replacement? I guess, I guess they yeah. are. Mm-hmm. Um, I like frig a lot. Oh man, that one's tough for me. I wouldn't say it personally, but when other people <laughs> do, I, I find it charming. Uh, shoot is another one as I say sometimes. I've gotten really into shoot lately. Yeah. Um, you say beans sometimes too. Beans is, is good. Beans is sort of a catch all, but shoot, <laughs> I don't know. There's something fun about like <laughs> my sort of cuss heavy brand and sort of going against it with a good <laughs> shoot from time to time. I just, I really, I've always really enjoyed those. Yeah. They're great. Mm hmm. Let's talk about the good place. Okay, <laughs> it's because it, it, the reason I wanted to do it here, I could talk endlessly about this show, um, but I do not want to spoil anything. It's in its second season right now, and it is like it's probably my favorite show on television right now, uh, and it's sort of new on on the throne there. But I uh, I I love this show so much. It's so so smart, and it handles these really heady philosophical concepts like genuinely very. They get into the work of you know Kierkegaard and and Descartes and and like really really hit that stuff hard in a way that is like really digestible in a 22 minute comedy television show uh that that really follows along and explains like what the, those concepts are uh that's not what I like love about it the things I love about it I literally just can't talk about um because I I think this is a show that you just got to start with episode 1 and just get going into it. Well, we can't say that all the characters are really strong. Characters are really strong, all the actors are fantastic. 
Um, like there's no kind of throwaway character in the bunch. Like if you had to pick your favorite, for example. Yeah, it's a small cast. It'd be difficult to do. It's a small cast, and they are so deliberately developed out that they they just have so much personality. Um, I I will say it is like it is a show that is not afraid to, uh, like blow up its own concept like to to change the rules uh, all the time like a lot of shows are kind of afraid to do that or they do it like once and it, sometimes they're successful and sometimes they're not the good place is like constantly reinventing itself in a way where it's been so successful every time it's tried it that no matter what they try to do usually when a show tries to like do something big and new I get worried like, oh, they're going to do a bad job with this. And it's really fun to watch a show where I just trust them so completely, no matter what they try to do. Because then whatever they throw at you, you get excited. And it's like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see them try to dig their way out of this one. Uh, it is a, it's a, it's a brilliant, brilliant show, which, again, you have to start on episode one and really power through because it really takes like – I think I stopped watching it the first time I watched it, like three episodes in. Yeah. Um, and only started watching it once the first season was done because people were like, oh, you have to watch this show. And well, because it starts out with this premise and you kind of think you understand what's going on and then they just keep complicating it. Yeah. They keep complicating it and then suddenly you realize like what a challenging and interesting show it is. Yeah, it is a, it is a, it is a brilliant, brilliant show. Um, you got another one? I know what I can talk about. Okay. Amazing Race. Yeah, Amazing Race is a good one, too. Amazing Race is back. Yeah. Um, This is one of those shows that's been around forever that people may have seen a season of and then stopped watching. Kind of like Survivor for us, too, where I think both Griffin and I watched maybe a season or two and then didn't for like 10 years. (laughs) And And then then, have watched every episode of it since. Um, But they've, they've started doing some really interesting kind of innovations to it, much like Survivor. Uh, but the idea, and this is kind of like Griffin's dating show that he came up with on Rosebud. Yeah, I think we actually did talk about Amazing Race quite yeah. a bit on that one. Yeah, but I, I will just say that, um, you know, it's it's interesting to watch people kind of, there's relationships that fall apart immediately. Like a, this season, as soon as like the very first leg, like, something gets complicated, these two people turn on each other right away. Uh, and then you see other people that are just really positive and, and have a really good attitude. And I can't think of anything more stressful than traveling, uh, especially in a place that you don't speak the language and you don't know how to get from place to place. And so it's really fascinating to watch these people kind of have these brand new experiences over and over and over again in like a really highly stressful environment. Yeah. Um, and, and so you feel really excited for them when they win or when they overcome a challenge or whatever. And I, I find it like I never watch that show and, and, and feel like disappointed when I leave it. Yeah. Uh, if you've never watched it before and you want a good season to hop onto, I don't remember which number it is, but there was a season where half the teams were made up of these like long time couples, I think. And the other half were, what they called blind dates. They just took like six people and matched them up with six other people just to see if love could spark while yeah. they went out there, which again, which is literally the reality show that Rachel and I pitched. Yeah. Uh, it was a, it was a really good one. Um, can I talk about our new blender? <laughs> okay. We got a new blender and it, it's the first time I've ever like splurged on a blender. I think it was like a hundred bucks or something like that, which is not that blend tech, like one that can like dissolve a crowbar or whatever is like, much more expensive, but it's so nice to have a good blender because it opens up. My jam is smooth soups. Like <laughs> if the chunky, chunky soups, you got to earn it. Chunky soup, a smooth soup. I'll and just knowing that every bite's going to be the same. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? At Cause me? you're a 30 year old man. <laughs> I guess I am. Um, but yeah, with a blender, you can make so much good smooth soup so easily. I've made a couple really good smooth soups. I made a ground nut bisque. Uh, that was like peanuts with uh, sweet sweet potatoes and uh, I forget everything that went ginger. into it. Ginger. Well, we also made a sweet potato and ginger bisque, but this was like a different one that had like kind of a spicy peanut profile oh, yeah, that was like right. really, really good. And it took like no time at all to make because this thing is a, is a f- fucking like NASA grade centrifuge that just actually they do actually sell centrifuges that you can use in the kitchen that you can use to like clarify butter. You like put it in this compartment and it spins around real fast until like the, the, butter part of it the like liquid part of it drips out of this hole oh my gosh it's so expensive and so excessive but i think that's interesting too but i love this new blender 
Yeah, no, it's actually, it's pretty incredible. I've always been discouraged with blenders because they never actually blend. This one blends the hell out of some stuff. Yes. Um, and you get that smooth soup. And that you get that all very 30 year old men crave. <laughs> it's good. Listen, a chunky soup, the texture of it usually grosses me out because there's usually some cooked vegetables in there. And the texture of most cooked, veg- cooked vegetables bums me out in a major way. Um, but here, you don't get that, that chaotic jumble of like there's some (laughs) celery in this one and there's two beans but there's no meat and in a smooth soup no questions asked baby it's all particles and stuff you're getting it all you know who else i bet would be a huge fan of the smooth soup who our baby son henry you're saying i eat baby (laughs) saying he also likes a smooth meal the flavors i make (laughs) with this incredible blender are too complex for our baby to appreciate. Um, yeah. Smooth soup. I guess it started out being, I would love blenders, but now it's, I love smooth soup. (laughs) You got another one? Um, this actually kind of goes a little bit along with what you said. Well, smooth is a chunk, a hard soup. (laughs) No. Hard soup. No. (laughs) Although that's something fun to ponder, isn't it? You could take smooth soup and make a smooth soup popsicle with it. Now we're talking. Hello. Could you make a hot popsicle? Could you make a hot popsicle this season on Top Chef? If Travis were here, he would say hotsicle. Why would he? Yeah, he would. He would. Um, I I like w- watching a cooking show while I eat dinner. Yes. This is something Griffin and I do quite often. Um, it It elevates your own meal i would say <laughs> um, it makes you feel a little bit more like, like artisanal yeah you're it. like fancier you really appreciate the flavors that you put together uh and i don't know it's just it's just a quick little one-off thing yeah we watched a whole season of top chef and like yeah a, we a watch week. top chef we watch master chef occasionally not quite as good it's it's really fallen off the wagon for now, me. Now I know. Um, I wanted to recommend a book that I've been reading. Uh, that's right, folks. That's right, folks. I read a book <laughs> like two a year. Uh, it's called Several Short Sentences About Writing by uh, an author named Verlin Klinkenborg. Oh, this is the book this, Justin gave yeah, me. Yeah, so Justin sent me this book, and he's like, I've been reading this book, and it's really eye-opening. Um, and I don't do a ton of writing. I do some for the Adventure Zone, and I do a little, little journaling here and there, and have tried to start like writing down like outlines and concepts for like a fiction novel. If I ever had the time to ever do that, but I don't really know how to write well. And that's not me like begging for compliments. Like it's a different thing than the stuff that I do. It reminds me of the Mitch Hedberg bit where he talks about being a comedian and then uh, people coming to ask him if he would write a movie and saying, that's like going to a, a chef and being like, Oh, you know how to cook, huh? And the chef says, yeah, they say, cool, can you farm? It reminds me of that a lot. But anyway, it, this, this book is really cool because it is sort of all about breaking down your style and trying to understand what you learned uh, throughout your life about writing and what is actually helpful about what you learned and what is kind of harmful. Specifically, like the things that you learned if you went to like college and you took writing classes in college and had to write these like very formal papers, you learned a specific style of writing and a certain way of organizing your thoughts that today might just sort of be more like you trying to emulate. Uh, a, a a style that you were taught trying to emulate this very, very formal way yeah. of writing rather than actually figuring out what your own thoughts are and then figure out how to sort of transmit those thoughts into sentences, which this whole book is literally made up of very, very short sentences. And the whole point of it is that's what you need to start writing and you'll get longer. But like before you can do that, you need to like basically kind of start over and and try to figure out like what your own voice is. Um, which again, like I'm not like a big writer, so it's not like I, uh, have a lot of beliefs in this department and it's really interesting to, to read something sort of, uh, critical in, in this way. Yeah. No, I think that's a good point. Cause I, I'm somebody that did a lot of creative writing classes as an undergrad in graduate school. And, uh, you, you're reading constantly and you're reading other people's work and you're reading published and, and unpublished stuff. And, uh, that has always really impacted what I was writing at the time. Uh, and so it is that you get to a point where you start to figure out like, wait, who, 
where where is my part in this? Yeah, and that was the big realization that I've I have not finished the book, uh, but that's the big realization I had like very early in the book. It says like when you wrote those formal papers, you had one thought, and you had that thought in the last paragraph of the paper, and then everything else leading up to it was you trying to build your way towards that one single good salient thought. And that cannot be, that's like how you learn to write for, for the most part. If you, if you go to college, like you learn to write, like trying to emulate that. And that is, that ain't, that's not good. That's not, that's not how you're supposed to do it. It also talks a lot about like revision and what revision is and what it should be. Um, it, it, it like advises against just writing in this like flow uh, and just like writing a bunch of shit, writing down the first things that come to your mind and then going back and revising them later. Like it tells you that revision is a process that should take place in your brain before you write a single word down and that each sentence, like every single word should be thoughtful in the sentence. And if you're writing down stuff that's kind of automatic, then you have fucked up. And this book sounds really intimidating. It is kind of, it's kind of intimidating, (laughs) but it's also like, uh, every single sort of bad practice that it mentioned, I looked at and I said, yes. And not only yes, like these are the reasons why when I start trying to write down things for like a, a, a novel or try to like write down the first like chapter of a novel and then I look at it and I say, this is fucking garbage. This book is like a little key that's like, here's why it's garbage. Yeah. It's because it's literally just the first thing that entered my mind that I wrote uncritically and then went back and during the revision process, I was not like bold enough to just say like, okay, well, this is gone. This is gone. This is gone. This is gone. This yeah. is gone. This is gone. Um, yeah, I think it, it is, I think intimidating, but I also think as somebody who is uh, almost chronically unhappy with the things that I write after I write them, uh, it's, it's sort of an interesting uh, guide on how to be critical of your own work and how to try to, um, streamline your process a little not streamline but like a uh, master your own process so that uh you you're you're a little bit more confident in what you write my voice is almost completely yeah almost I'm completely that. done uh maybe we should just wrap up if yeah, you're okay with so. that um i have a couple sub- uh, submissions here uh the first one was sent in by jessica who says uh i want to share one of my favorite things the charity knitting circle i run every other week a group of volunteers meet up and i teach them basic knitting techniques and we make squares that we sew into baby blankets to donate to local hospitals this is my second year running this and there's something so wonderful about watching my students eyes light up as they make progress and realize that they can in fact finish the project and help out a family in need all while making friends sharing about their days and eating popcorn best shit ever that's so cool top tier amazing stuff thank you so much for sharing jessica and thanks for doing this really cool thing it sounds really fun um here's another one from beckett who says my wonderful thing right now is sleeping with the window open my fiance and i live in a densely populated suburb of dc and there's always lots of traffic on the street below and having the window open for sound and breeze at night is really great it's been extremely cold lately so we haven't been able to for like three months but i'm really looking forward to when it warms back up this one resonated with me. I have this, these like weirdly powerful memories of the first like few times I slept over at your house that yeah. you were living in in Austin. I used to always have the window open. You used to always have the window open, which I never did. And we would sleep with the window open. And I remember being so like romanced I by, know. by, well, everything about that situation. I guess. <laughs> uh, and here's one last one from Monty who says, recently my adoptive older brother got the SNES mini. Uh, and he's been teaching me how to play all the games he grew up with. I'm still on Earthbound right now, but I think spending time playing video games with family is just wonderful. I actually talked about the SNES uh, classic. I think it's called the mini in Europe, maybe. Um, but I love this. I love this idea of just like, hey, you haven't played these games before. Let me show them to you. Griffin is so excited about that becoming part of his relationship with Henry. Yes, while also being like entirely cognizant of yeah, like how weird it would be to just be like, now sit down. This is Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> you must love Crash Bandicoot like your father and your his father. We're a Bandicoot before. house. We are a Bandicoot household. It is our birthright. <laughs> You must love Crash and his weird jorts. <laughs> I can do this voice really good right yeah, now. You can. It's not even hard for me. <laughs> he eats the wump of fruit okay, and he okay. throws them away. Okay. You two must feast on the wump of fruit <laughs> like your father, Crash Band. I mean, oops, the secret is revealed. Oh, no. Hand me that wump of fruit. 
I think it's called Wumpa Fruit. Anyway, this has been wonderful. It's a Wumpa Fruit <laughs> podcast about Crash Bandicoot. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you again for bearing with us while we sort of deal with our own stuff over over here. Um, we try not to put that on you, but it's it's a it's a heavy load. Um, thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. Uh, they're really great. What are some great Maximum Fun shows that you're There's into so right now? There's so many new ones. I know. Lately. Inside Pop is a good one. It is a good one. Oh, Heat Rocks is another one. Heat Rocks it's is very, fantastic. very fantastic. Uh, and there's shows like Stop Podcasting Yourself and Jordan Jesse Go and so many all at MaximumFun.org. Uh, and if you want to see more of our stuff, you can go to MacRoyShows.com. Is that it? I think that might be it. That's it. Thank you all so much for listening. We will be back next week, and then there will be a new episode. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Bye. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hey, we'd like to talk to you about our new podcast on Maximum Fun, Friendly Fire. It's the podcast about action movies and Sylvester Stallone specifically. (laughs) It's, It's the show I've always wanted to make. It is not that. It is not that at all. It's a little bit more of a war movie podcast. It's not a little bit more of a war movie podcast. It is explicitly a war movie podcast. We look at them from all sides and put them in a variety of cultural and historical contexts such that anyone is going to enjoy this show. So go grab Friendly Fire every Friday on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts.